Hi, George here. Let's talk about layer masks. This is a technique I use in almost every single project, and it's a technique you need to learn in order to get the most flexibility when you're working here inside of Photoshop Elements. Now I have an example here of a layer mask. That's this guy up here on this background. It's kind of a farm background. If I just hide the background, disable, there we go. That's the original image, and I made a layer mask to hide that current background and show the new background. This is the most common use for doing layer masks. But there's a lot more you can do with this and a lot of different ways in controlling how layer masks are done. Before I get into this, I just want to mention that starting this coming weekend, I'll be putting my new Photoshop Elements videos over on my HTG Photo channel. So if you want to keep on watching the Photoshop Elements videos, make sure you go over there and subscribe to HTG Photo. I'll put a link for that in the description. Now all of my old videos will still be staying here. So don't lose this channel because that's where all the old stuff is. There's just no good way to move videos from one channel to another on YouTube. So they're all staying here. But all the new stuff is over there on HTG Photo. It's going to be dedicated just to photo related projects. Okay, we'll start off here with doing this quick project and get a first layer mask made. And we'll then go into a much deeper dive on how layer masks are handled and used. Okay, I'm just going to delete this layer up here. Hit the delete button. There we go. Get rid of that and bring this layer back in again. And as I mentioned, this is a perfect use for layer masks. And I'll do a real easy one here. This works out well if you have a good separation between your foreground and background. Obviously, we do on this. I'll just grab the Lasso tool. This down here to a new selection. I my feathering set at one pixel. That just softens the edge up just a little bit. I'll take my Lasso tool, come down here. And I'll just do a fast Lasso right around. Now, I'm staying pretty close, as you can see here. And if you have trouble with this kind of a selection, then it might be how you're holding your mouse. What I do is I have a padded wrist wrist right in front of my mouse pad, and I rest my wrist on that wrist rest. And then I move the mouse with just my fingers. And that allows me to make very easy and controlled movements like that. If I tried moving my mouse with just my arm and my hand not resting, you can see if I try coming around here, it's it's not as easy for me to control that. So I always rest my wrist on that wrist rest. Okay, we have our basic selection. Let's now come down here to refine edge. There we go. And I almost always use the overlay here, kind of this red overlay. And there's the brush size. I'll leave all the settings at their defaults. No reason to bother with that on this one. And then simply brush right over that edge there where the image goes into the background. And I'll do this in just little short strokes. There we go, just a nice quick layer mask. Now one little tricky thing right here, so we have the see-through glasses, so make sure you get into those. And let's just come around the hair up here. I almost always use this tool, the Refine Edge tool, when I'm doing hair, because it gives you a real nice clean selection along their hair and fur, things like that. Sometimes I'll do hard edges like this shirt. I'll do those manually and not worry about refine edge, but I always use refine edge for hair and tricky stuff. Okay, now that we have our basic selection made in here, come down here where it says output to, and we'll change this to output to new layer with layer mask. This again is what I normally do, and that's because it gives me a backup layer for that one layer right there. It hides the original layer and gives me a new layer with the layer mask. And there we go. Okay, so easy layer mask. Now, if you want to work along with this project, I have the link for this background picture and the link for this foreground picture in here in the description. I got both of these over there at Pixabay, my favorite site for this kind of image. It's a free site, free site to use. So that's where I got these two. Again, the links for those are in the description. Okay, now that we have our layer mask, we can take a look at how we can use this layer mask a bit better. Now, first thing, notice right here is a little kind of a link shape like a little bit of a chain link right here. That means that these two layers are linked together. If I go over here to my move tool and I move the person around, the layer mask moves with the person. I think over here is a bit better position actually. There we go. So it moves with the person. And you can see it up here on the layer mask now that the layer mask has actually moved over. Now if we unlink that, just click that to unlink it, and I move the person, the layer mask stays put. So you can move the layer mask or not with your person. It's really up to you. I'll just do a control Z to go back. This is almost always locked. Sometimes for some special effects, you may want to be able to move those separately. 
Now notice in the layer mask, anywhere where it's white, we're seeing our foreground image in here. Where it's black, we're seeing the background image. Now the white on the left-hand side, that's just because there is no image over there. So there's nothing to see on that. And that shows you another aspect here of layer masks, and that is that white shows and black hides. We can reverse this layer mask. If I click on the layer mask, notice that light blue outline that shows up over here. Click on the image side, double click, there we go. Back over to the layer mask side, light blue outline. That shows you which side of your layer is currently selected. We're now on the layer mask. Let's go up here to the filter menu, come down to adjustments and invert. This is going to reverse the black and white on that layer mask. There we go. So we're now showing the background and hiding the foreground. This actually can be used sometimes in special effects if you want to have a silhouette of something, make a layer mask of it and then just reverse that layer mask and there's your silhouette, kind of neat trick. Okay, back up here to filter and adjustments and I'll invert that again. Just reversing that, and there we go. There's also a right-click menu for the layer mask itself. If you right-click here on the name, you're going to be getting the pop-up menu for the layer. But if you right-click on the layer mask, you get a different pop-up for the layer mask. The top one is to disable. That just hides it temporarily. There's that X through it. Right-click again, and it brings it back up again. If you right-click on that, you can delete the layer mask. It just takes it away just like that. I use Control Z to bring that back up again. That just is the undo keyboard shortcut. You can apply the layer mask. What this does is it basically merges the layer mask and the image on the layer into one like that. It just acts kind of like an eraser. And again, the Control Z to undo that move. And down here, you can work with selections. If I wanted to bring my selection back up again for whatever reason, I can add the mask to a selection. And there we go. There is the selection that we had originally made. Or if you have a pre-existing selection on here, you can actually add the layer mask to your new selection. Kind of a neat trick. Let me show you that. I'm just going to do Control D to deselect that. And I have the hill back here. I'm just going to do a real fast, not a real careful, but a real fast selection right along our edge. Let's come down to that background layer. Here we go. And I'll hide the foreground layer. And let's make a selection right along here. Again, using the same tool. Exact same trick that we did for the man in the image. Just come down along here and outside along the top and back down this side. And then I'll use refined edge and let's come in here and get the edges of these bushes and the trees and so forth on that mountain edge back there. A little bit of a hill back there. And I'll go along and let's output this to New layer with layer mask, same thing again. And that hides that background at the bottom. Let's just reverse this, go right up here to the layer mask side and up here to filter and adjustments, invert. We're now seeing just the bottom. You can bring back your selection, right click and let's add mask to selection. You see there is the mask right down here. That's the part that's showing. Let's say I wanted to have the guy in here and have his selection added to this selection. You can do things like that. Let's just show him again. Let's come up to his layer. You can see that selection right across there goes right across his face. Right click on his layer mask and that's add mask to selection. And notice that we kept that background selection. We've now added in the guy on his foreground selection right here. So you can, on this right click menu, you can actually add multiple selections together based upon your original layer mask. Now there are some times when this little trick does come in handy. Okay, let's just do Control D to deselect that. And we'll come down here, I'm going to right click on this and let's delete the layer mask. There we go, it's back to the original setting again. Now I mentioned that black hides and white shows. We can see that, if we go over here to the layer mask side, Let's grab our paintbrush. I'm just going to grab black right here. We're using the black color on the paintbrush. There's a paintbrush. I'll bring my size up quite a bit. You see it on his shirt right here. So I'm on the layer mask. If I paint black across this, black hides whatever's on the layer mask. Let's do Control Z to undo that. If I reverse this, let's go back up here to the layer mask. Let's reverse our colors here so it's white shows. And if I'm painting with white, notice I'm now showing more of the original background. So you can refine or paint on a layer mask directly by using black or white paint. Let's just control Z to back up on that step. There we go. 
you also can put in gradients in here. You can do a gradient. If you think about that, if black hides and white shows, then having a black to white gradient is going to give you a transparency effect. Easy to see that, just the basic idea here. Back to our colors. Let's come down to a 50% gray, just about here. If I paint on with a gray, there you go. There is that transparency effect. So gray values give you different values of transparency. Let's just control Z and back out of that. And that can be used to fade layers out. So on this layer right down here, I'm going to add a layer mask to this layer. You can add a standard layer mask by hitting the layer mask button or go up here to layer and then come down here to layer mask. And you can do a reveal all. This is a white layer mask or a hide all. That's a black layer mask. I'm just going to do a reveal all layer mask. It just gives me a layer mask on this side. I can now put a gradient on this. Let's just set our colors back here to black to white. Go to the gradient tool. And right down here, we're at black to white gradient. Again, on the layer mask side, I'll go to the left-hand side here. And I'll pull straight across. And that puts in a gradient going from black, which is hide, to white, which is show. And it allows me to fade in the background. Now, it's too far over here. Let's just undo that, Control-Z. And I'll come in about halfway through. And that fades out that first part over here where it's black. And it fades it into showing the background where the gradient is white. So you can put gradients very easily onto a layer mask to give you a transparency or fading out transparency effect. Make it a little bit further. If I do it again, it just takes it further in like that. Sometimes nice if you're doing graphics. Let's come down here to our layer one. I'll add a new layer right here. Let's fill this layer with something else with a new color. I'll just grab some kind of a nice neutral blue in here. Maybe just a little bit more blue to that. A little brighter. There we go. Paint bucket, click in there, and now we have the background fading from a solid blue, fading into our photo on the right-hand side by using that gradient on that background and fitting that out into our nice blue. Great way to make cards. For instance, you can put your text right over in here and it gives a real nice effect, real nice look. Don't forget that I'll be switching all my new videos over starting at the end of this week over to my new HTG photo channel. And if you really want to learn how to use Photoshop Elements, the best way to do that is to get my complete training course where I cover everything in Photoshop Elements. You know, all of the tools, all the menus, all the different options, everything. Quick edit, guided edit, everything. And I'll put the link for my course right down there in the description. And I have versions for all the different versions of Photoshop Elements. Don't forget to click like on this video. Make sure you subscribe. If you really enjoyed this, send me a thanks. I always appreciate that. That's a thanks button down there, bottom right-hand corner. And I'll see you next time.